<clears throat> okay, so but, and they've started. Sorry, I made you, yes, I made you the host, and you started it. So it's going to actually end up being on your uh, on on your desktop, but we can figure that out later in Dropbox or something to send it to me afterwards if that's fine. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Because, of course, it's a technology one, and I'm the problem. I am the user <laughs> who causes all problems. So I'm glad that we were able to start that way. Um, so <laughs> uh, what's kind of neat about this is that if you're the person who's speaking, then what ends up happening is that you, you speaking is what's going to be recorded, so it gets popped up. And you can see when I'm speaking, it's just that little telephone that's happening. Um, so just recognizing that when you're not speaking, you might want to be on mute because someone else might be speaking and it's going to actually be recording your face. So either you have to look beautiful all the time <laughs> or you have to have it muted. So Peter's not happy about that. Um, so what we're going to do is really uh, just jump into it. I'm not supposed to speak because clearly I'm the person who knows the least about technology on this call right now. And uh, based on that, uh, we'll kind of go in order. Uh, to my left, we have Jackie. So do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jackie Northy. I'm uh, uh, living out in Alberta, in small town Alberta, and we have what we call the Rising Spirit Ministry uh, um, a project and it's a, a, a project that includes a technology piece as well as two uh, churches working together. Awesome. Randy. Uh, I'm Randy Boyd. I'm in Thunder Bay and uh, we have uh, a multi-site initiative where we have a variety of congregations joining us for a live interactive service on Sundays. Very cool. Dave, illuminate faith. Yes, Dave Exley. I'm a lead minister for Riverside United Church in uh, London, Ontario, and I also uh, host the Illuminate Faith podcast. Oh, George. We can't hear you, George. Unmute. I have to unmute. <laughs> uh, I'm George Bott. I'm in Marathon, Ontario at St. John's United Church. I'm one of four licensed lay worship leaders, uh, um, making sure that worship happens on a regular basis at St. John's. And uh, we're involved in a cluster worship arrangement with uh, four to six other churches in our immediate region. Great. Peter. Uh, hi, I'm Peter from uh, Yellowknife United Church in uh, Yellowknife, Northwest Territories. Um, we are not a really techie church, but I'm a really techie guy. I have a degree in computer science, and I characterize my ministry as um, uh, looking into the, inter the intersection of theology and technology for close to 50 years now, I'm getting close to retirement uh, this year. Um, done tons of workshops uh, in the church about the use of technology for various people in administration and so on. Um, we can do it, but I like to look at the deeper, some of the deeper aspects of, of how technology and theology intersect. And uh, I think the latest furor around Facebook is a, is a really good case study about uh, the ways that we sometimes I'll use these words uh, um, cautiously, but how we sometimes sell our soul um, because of what uh, what technology offers to us without thinking about it uh, as deeply as we should, maybe. Awesome. Love to jump, uh, jump into that. That'll be good. The other Peter. Yeah, I run the Community Innovation Hub at St. Andrew's Church <coughs> in Markham, Ontario, and we have 21 hubsters who are small business, nonprofits, and charities who give back to community. Benefit for the church is they engage with the community and they give back to the community. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle, you're on mute. We still can't hear you. Let's see, can I unmute you? Bottom left corner, Michelle, there's a little microphone. Click it. Sorry, I'm doing two things at once. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm here and I'm focused. I'm Michelle and I'm uh, located in Toronto and I'm a webmaster. 
That is such a cool title. I've always loved that. I really appreciate Webmasters. Yeah. Um, Stacey? Hi, I'm Stacey. I am at the United Church of Meadowade in Winnipeg. I've never done one of these before, so excuse me if I'm doing it wrong. Um, and we are starting a podcast at our church um, called Heartbeats and just looking for ideas of how to use technology and make it work well for us. You know what, Stacey, you've already done better than I have, and I've done this a few times, so we're good. <laughs> uh, Greg. You're on mute. Might just be that your microphone, um, if you want to do a test on it, you might be able to hear us, but it's not coming the other way. It's okay. We'll, we'll jump to Willie and then come back to you. I am. I'm Willie. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, I'm Willie. I'm an Ebenezer United Church in Guelph Line, out in the middle of nowhere. But um, I just don't know a lot about technology, and I decided it's time to learn. Go, Willie. <laughs> Um, well, he has a lot of uh, great experience in marketing and communication and really uh, getting the community to attempt new things. So I love that you're doing this. Thanks, Willie. Greg, how's it going over there? I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I just turned it on and off. That always works, right? So or kick it. That's what I do. It's always great <laughs> when you can hit technology and make it work. That's a plus. So I'm Greg Simpson, and I currently serve in uh, Calvary United in Rodney, Ontario. We're not doing a whole lot of tech stuff here, but I came to ministry through technology, and so I'm here to just to, to listen and learn and be part of the conversation. Awesome. Also doing very cool things. Um, we have another 519. Has that person already spoken? Is that you, Willie? Yes. Okay. Right. I think... Yeah, we're good. We got everyone here. So, um, like I said at the very beginning, it's not about me. It's about you actually getting to meet each other. And what's been really interesting is many of you um, who are doing various tech initiatives that have been funded by Embracing the Spirit, I actually wanted you guys to talk with each other because you're doing many things that are very different from each other. And then it sounds like we have a lot of people also on the line, including our, our webmaster um, and others who are trying to look at other ways to incorporate technology into their existing work, as well as a new podcast that we're learning about, which is really exciting. Um, so kind of jumping into the technology, I, I think where I wanted to start is something that I think a lot of churches have been thinking about is live streaming. I think that's kind of the place where there's been a lot of interest in that. And I know that we have at least two experts um, being both Randy and George. And so I think starting there as one component of, uh, of technology in worship and for church and how you're using that and what you're seeing as the future would be really cool. So I'll let you guys decide who goes first because I know you know each other. You go ahead, George. Good old mute. It's got you again. No, not yet. Okay, you got me now. Rand, I'm, I'm thinking maybe Randy should start because he's already got a whole bunch of experience and I'm at the very beginning of this um, and he and I are looking at doing some collaboration and uh, seeing where we can work with one another in, in our respective projects. But he's really got- well, I'm, I'm gonna humbly disagree. I'm gonna get you to go first, George, because a lot of people who are getting into the live streaming, they want to know about the beginning stage and maybe where Randy's at is almost too overwhelming. So like, it's exciting to know where Randy's okay. at, but let's say, George, where are you at? Okay. Well, just, just so you have the context of where St. John's is at the moment, uh, we are a small rural Northern United Church on the North shore of Lake Superior. And if you take a look at the graphic behind me, I was very deliberate in putting that up because the distance from one edge of that circle to the other, is 375 kilometers. And the communities that I've marked with the little flags in there are the <coughs> communities that St. John's supports the worship ministry of. Um, they are, all of those churches in this region are without paid accountable ministry at this point. So when David Giuliano changed his call uh, last June, 
uh, we had already been five years into a team ministry with him and working with the churches that are marked on that screen. And we were supporting their, their worship um, activities by going to one of those churches, each, uh, each of those churches in the month. So we had David as paid accountable minister and four licensed lay worship leaders and the licensed lay worship leaders were on the road. That was how we initiated our, our project and we've maintained that for five to six years, a little bit longer with St. Andrews and Scriber, a little bit longer with uh, uh, St. Paul's in Manitowoc. That has evolved into some other things. So for instance, in St. Andrews and Scriber, uh, this is a congregation, the average age of which is about 86. All right, they're a very small congregation, faith-filled, want to worship every Sunday, and so um, we have gone to give them some respite on a regular basis. I'm also their pastoral charge supervisor, and I've been able to drag them kicking and screaming into the world of technology, and I've connected them to Randy. So on the last Sunday, the fourth Sunday, rather, of every month, they worship together with Trinity United Church in Thunder Bay, with Randy's congregation, and from time to time, they worship with other congregations at the same time using technology. So they have a video audio link to Thunder Bay. <clears throat> and so that's one of their Sundays. They, uh, all of the churches in our cluster have licensed, uh, lay, or, sorry, have sacraments elders uh, who support that ministry as well. And uh, someone from Marathon goes once a month to each of those communities and subscriber to help. So that's the beginning of our, our technological approach to things. The, awesome. uh, the next part of that is we now are looking at how can we uh, communicate with our cluster churches um, and do the same kind of thing that Randy is doing with the churches in the Thunder Bay area and wider region um, so that we too can worship together using technology We've experimented with it over the time. We had 10 churches, 10 groups from Winnipeg to Marathon, uh, actually in a communion service. Uh, uh, yes, and, it, and it, it was all youth. We had 70 youth in our, in our congregation for that worship service. We've done that a few times and um, uh, at 10 different locations, and that's worked marvelously to the point that we've learned that you can build relationships over technology. So the virtual world is a place to build relationships that are meaningful and lasting. Um, we've experimented to, uh, with the video uh, link um, by doing some book studies. So we we did a book study uh, a year or so ago with um, the folks in Manitowoc. There weren't enough people to make it a uh, a good exercise in marathon, so we opened it up to the whole cluster, and Manitowoc opted in with five people. Um, on one particular occasion, uh, while we're sitting towards the end and we're uh, looking at a closing prayer, it suddenly dawned on me the people in Manitowoc were sitting in a semicircle in front of the camera. And so were the group of us in marathon in our living room sitting in a semicircle. And it suddenly dawned on me if everybody joined hands, including the people on the end, reach forward like that, we were in a circle, a virtual circle. And so we were able to pray together in that space uh, of a virtual circle. Uh, it was, a, it was an, a, an amazing moment when we realized how we were connected, both in time and space and virtual, uh, virtual space. That's great. So what I really like that you've done is you've already started to like outline maybe our conversation today is that where you, your congregation or community of faith has started is how to use technology in worship. And now you've extended that into, well, it's not just worship. It's actually our ongoing spiritual development. Actually, not just that. It's relationship. And I know we have lots of people on the line of how to use it for community outreach. Right, and how it's turning into a larger community. So on the worship side, Randy, what else is happening for you guys? How else are you using technology? Well, in, in beyond worship, uh, you know, we've just had uh, um, some workshops 
where we've used the same technology that we use on a Sunday morning uh, to connect. Uh, we, we've been doing some stuff with uh, seniors, elder abuse, dementia. And so we had uh, a guest speaker come from Scotland and who was physically here, but we connected, we were looking at cross-cultural ideas of how different cultures uh, care for the elderly. And so we had on, an, uh, on three Skype calls, um, uh, someone from Malaysia, someone from China, and someone from South Africa. Uh, and we were able to aggregate them on the screen, have a question and answer period. Uh, and it was a fully interactive workshop with international participants. And we were pretty excited about that. Okay. Uh, and we've been doing some other, other things in terms of outreach, in terms of community uh, elements as well. So, I, you know, George outlined sort of the, the technology. For us in worship, the next step is to go uh, beyond our time zone. Um, so there's a sort of a limit to how many you can have in a worship service and have every, per, every congregation participating meaningfully. Uh, and we find that that's about three. We can stretch it to four uh, congregations uh, if, if need be, but three is sort of optimal. Uh, but the hub is the expensive part, and we sort of realize that there's nothing stopping us from being a hub for a cluster of congregations in different time zones. And so our next initiative is to go west um, to the central time zone and see if we can create the same cluster and support for congregations there. Uh, and then the next initiative is to go out to the east coast and see if we can create uh, a cluster of congregations there. So those are some of the, the areas that we're, we're working on. Um, thank you. I, and I, I know that Peter has to leave. Um, so before he leaves, I wanted to kind of segue what Randy and George have been talking about, of how technology and worship um, is one part and how it leads to relationships. And yet there's this other narrative that's happening that technology is actually making us more I, it. So we're treating other people as it rather than people, especially like how many times you've heard of people being dumped by text message, right? <laughs> it's so much to that point. So um, I think that's part of the theological debate is, is it okay to worship by technology? It, is it actually being relational or are there limitations? I'd love to open that up for anyone who wants to comment. Well, I would just make just to, to quickly comment that uh, our cluster is uh, is other churches in Thunder Bay as well, and even some churches just outside of Thunder Bay. And I think one of the unexpected benefits we found was that Trinity is developing relationships with these other congregations uh, to the point where um, Pine Grove, which is a small village outside of Thunder Bay, has a, a pancake, a pancake a meal after church. And... Uh, a third of the people there are Trinity people who come from Trinity, go out there after church for lunch. Uh, and, and they support each other in fundraisers and all sorts of stuff. So we're certainly finding that uh, it's not just a virtual connection, uh, but, but that the congregations are getting to know each other well, even in a physical presence. I now, agree I with that. I think that um, the technology is a way to reach people, um, but it's also a way to entice them to have real life uh, experiences with other people. So what I try and work on doing is doing uh, seven day a week church through technology. And um, so I'm trying to pass our message along every single day. And um, uh, to the point that I, uh, I'm inviting them to come for a real life experience or even reach out in their neighborhood to have a real life experience with somebody. So we try and really focus on that because I think technology in itself is just a bridge. It, it, it can't, um, we can't stay in these isolated boxes um, like with what Facebook happened uh, with the privacy issues from Facebook last week and so many other social issues that teenagers are facing now. They're all, alone in their bedrooms texting people and this is this is dangerous so technology is fantastic but we want to be careful to really use it as a bridge to get people having real life experiences with each other okay i i just wanted to say something and then i'll be quiet but uh, there's just this is becoming sort of a um I think an important part of the discussion, I agree that encouraging people to have real, or what you say is real life experiences, physical experiences with each other is really important and valuable. Um, 
but I'm beginning to realize that the virtual is real too. And sort of pushing back on the notion of there's this virtual thing that's maybe not as good, and the real thing is physical contact with people. And it was sort of the theme. I don't know if anyone has seen uh, Ready Player One yet, uh, but uh, it sort of became the theme of the, the moral of the story was, yeah, but there's nothing like real face-to-face -face stuff. And I, I'm beginning to disagree with that. I think the virtual is real too. It's a different kind of real. It doesn't mean that there's not great value in face-to-face, -face, but I think we need to start acknowledging that the virtual has a reality to it as well. And seeing that and valuing that and, uh, and recognizing that it has a place and, and a reality itself. So uh, thank you. It's a perfect segue for Jackie. Uh, so it's really interesting because Randy and George, you both kind of started with the worship and then realizing elsewhere. And thank you, Michelle, for your story of how you're expanding that further. But Jackie, you actually started not from the worship part. You started somewhere else. You want to tell your story? Sure. Um, yeah, we st we actually started at, at, with the on uh, develop, trying to develop an online ministry. And I ac actually agree with you, Randy. I think um, that... Uh, you know, we, the reality is, is if we want, we have global messages, we have messages that are, are applicable all over the world. And so we're not ever going to be face to face to all of those people. So we have an opportunity at this time to, to um, create a global community, uh, whether that be globally within a uh, Alberta or Canada or the world, whatever it is, because um, you can't really stop it once you've got it out there. And, and that's what we did is we've created uh, what we call Six Ways from Sunday um, online uh, ministry that uh, partners with the two churches that I work with, which are two very small communities in, in rural Alberta, which by the way, we also live stream every Sunday uh, from the message gets streamed from one place to the other to, uh, to the other one. And then we archive the sermons and they go onto our website. So the sermons are always there for anybody to, to for, who's been ill or whatever but we also now are uh, have a promotional campaign where we're starting to look at what it is you know uh, the messages for um, for the online community and it is different Randy's right it's different in that you're not necessarily going to get people to sit there for an hour anymore but you still have a message that can be delivered quite succinctly and and uh, delivered uh, well you know like I said more globally or more uh, regionally is maybe the better word uh, more regionally um, and that uh, people start to engage with and we um, we we have, we learned, uh, I had started a, a community called farmon.com, which was um, in our, you know, we live in a town of 850 people and we ended up creating a global community for that particular um, organization of over, uh, all over the world, 26 countries actually is where eventually engaged with us. And it was completely online. There was nothing, there was no face-to-faces at any time. And yet people, it was for young farmers and they, they really connected with each other because they, they recognized that their story in Canada was the same as all over the world. We're experiencing the same sorts of uh, struggles and challenges. And so um, they connected with each other. And to this day, there are still some that connections that continue to happen, uh, you know, especially in Europe with, with the Canadians. And so um, it's very, very possible to create, like Randy said, uh, of relationships that are maybe different you can't touch them, but you can still have that dialogue and you can still have those conversations that, that are really um, relevant to, to you know, where we are in the world. So um, I think that uh, what we've learned in developing an online uh, ministry, though, is that uh, it is a little bit different than, than young farmers because young farmers all have kind of a single focus, which is to grow food and, and to feed the, their communities, whereas um, from a, a spiritual perspective, uh, there's so many, it's broad, it's very broad, and we need to, you know, so we're learning step by step how to um, engage that community and start to build it in a, in a way that um, is a little more global, but still keeps our, our, our United Church message, basically, and um, it's starting, ours is really starting to grow. We, we created a video called the Faith Manifesto that um, really hit, I don't think it was about 40,000 people by the time we were done in a, in a couple of days, and it, uh, it had a universal message, so uh, people <clears throat> were able to connect that way. 
Amazing. Already really excited about some of the linkages, like uh, from what Jackie's talking about, and Michelle, I mean, how do you get outside of Sunday? And then the areas where people have started, but then seeing how relationships can go elsewhere. So I'd like to kind of, Chris, are you there? I saw you a little bit. Okay. Hi. So Chris, I'm going to get you to introduce yourself because I feel that from where Jackie's at and how you're looking at using technology for outreach and connecting technology to face-to-face, -to -face, do you want to talk about your platform and what's going on? Yeah, I'd love to, um, especially since eventually we'll be looking for more people to, to do the same thing we are, we're doing and replicating it in their neighborhoods. Uh, so um, I'm executive director of the Stone Soup Network, which is a program of Windermere United Church. And what it basically is, is an online platform uh, that connects contributions from local um, businesses of products or services with community leaders. So um, that's like reverends and priests and spiritual leaders in the neighborhood, that's doctors, that's social workers in the schools and in the community, um, staff at um, health centers and women's shelters, etc. cetera. Um, and basically what we do is we solicit those, um, those contributions, we maintain an online platform and we train these community leaders. And what they can do is, um, access the uh, the platform when they're working with one of their clients and one of the towards long-term um, physical mental economic health etc um, goals um, and their client hits a momentary obstacle because their goal isn't to, to there are a lot of great programs dealing with chronic issues like homelessness and such so this is more like someone's hit a momentary obstacle to the long-term work they're doing with this community leader I mean, the community leader can jump onto the platform um, see what's available to help them over that hurdle and uh, and help them keep progressing towards the long-term goals that that leader is working with towards them yeah so taking technology and how do you build community with it so it's kind of I, I yeah so so Chris, if I can you, if I can talk about that context now that it's like yeah. I just wanted to give everyone a moment to see if everyone understood because sometimes I'm a little long-winded in my explanation. Um, so what it is is like it's a it's a new approach to ministry. Um, church used to serve that function. Church used to be the the central um, common community space that people came together, and if someone wasn't doing well, if someone you know. If someone needed something, uh, if they needed the support of the community, whether, you know, through a difficult time or like with, you know, if, if there was a death in the family and uh, people knew and people stopped by with, with um, casseroles and that sort of thing. And um, the church uh, with, with attendance, if you look at the stuff on um, the urban forest and such like, and such as that church isn't, um, isn't able to do that central role quite as well as it did with diminishing attendance and that sort of thing. So this has uh, been a way for at least uh, Stone Soup Network in our community um, to fulfill that traditional role um, that church used to, to used to fill and find using technology to do that. No, it's fabulous. And then Chris, you did say you're looking for two new communities to, uh, to expand into. So if anyone's interested, being so tech savvy and I love that you're walking around like you're proving how tech savvy you are that's so awesome <laughs> thank you yeah I'm happy if some if, if this catches someone's interest we've talked to uh, Edge has referred us to a couple of people that we've had preliminary conversations with one that wants to use this within their congregation another that wants to use this um, across the region and uh, and just the idea is that we're designed, we've designed it and we'll continue to it in, uh, in a flexible, we're going to design it in a flexible enough way that it's really um, some of the key implementation factors that would distinguish different people's needs. So it would be who do, you, who do you give what access, who do you solicit, what do you put on the certificates that facilitate this is really the only difference between um, different usage cases that we found. The platform itself seems to be flexible enough to allow um, 
any of number of uses facilitating uh, a similar goal. Yeah, so what's kind of cool about this is we've seen how technology helps in worship, uh, then where people are expanding into how is it part of community outreach and pastoral care. Now we're just, <laughs> it's kind of neat, using all the church language and then how can we look at that with tech. So communication and marketing we haven't touched on yet. David, I'll start with you. That's actually. <laughs> Okay, um, so what what do you want me to talk about? Just the podcast, or well, yeah, the podcast and how and maybe how communication you use technology differently. And Michelle, as the webmaster, I'm coming back to you too. Yeah, I guess uh, just to sort of give a, a brief background here, and and for me, when I think about where we are, um, you know, within our world, uh, I, I shared this on one of our podcast episodes how. Uh, it was like in the mid 1990s where I, you know, was studying broadcasting and uh, met with a few other people. We were looking at uh, launching our own radio station, and, and I'll never forget getting the uh, the application from the CRTC. We were a little bold, uh, a little naive as well, and uh, received the application, which was just, I mean, just a huge stack uh, that uh, you needed somebody that at the time, you know, would cost fifty dollars an hour to fill out the application for you. It was quite the process. And to be where we are today, where anybody can just, you know, broadcast basically to the world uh, with the push of a button with, uh, you know, the phone in their hand with, you know, a, a inexpensive USB mic, that type of, of thing. It's really uh, changed, uh, changed our, our world uh, in many ways for the better, uh, allowing us to, uh, to get, uh, to get our information out there. So um, yeah, actually the podcast started uh, when, uh, when I was doing an internship with edge and decided that uh, we needed to launch something that uh, would live on past that, that internship. And uh, we're, we're fighting to to make sure that that uh, it's a challenge, I think, to um, uh, to work through these new technologies because the reality is that I think that our church is still working from you know old ways of of thinking, and and I would include myself in on that uh, that. <coughs> Uh, back in the day, uh, it was uh, common for um, ministers to to write a, a column in the local newspaper and that type of thing. And, and I think podcasting is is a new way of doing that same thing. Uh, for me, it's also been great from the standpoint that uh, it allows me that you know when I'm at a, an event or something like that, I can say to you know one of those uh, big name speakers, uh, "Hey, can you take you know 15 minutes and." And talk with me about um, this particular topic and uh, it creates just a, a wonderful space that we can then share that information with uh, with the world in a new and exciting way and I know a lot of folks um, that are you know in rem remote locations where they're unable to um, uh, to get to maybe some or it's costly to get to some of those uh, major events uh, whether it be in the United States or here in Canada uh, to be able to you know, push out a podcast episode in order that they might receive that and, and listen to it at any time has been great. So I think that uh, the, the changing world of communication certainly has its drawbacks, but, uh, but we're finding um, with the work that we're doing that, uh, that it's really opening up some possibilities here. Uh, and uh, I'm excited that the podcasting industry is really taking off. And uh, so we're experimenting and going to keep uh, pushing through here and trying new things and uh, uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying the ride and hoping that it uh, provides uh, help and support to those uh, in ministry and those that are, uh, have deep spiritual questions. Dave, do you, do you host the podcast yourself? Yeah, it's myself. It started uh, with myself, uh, Reverend Doug Peck, uh, who serves a couple of uh, rural congregations outside London, Ontario, where I am, uh, and Isaac Mundy, who has uh, left uh, the city of London, is now up in uh, Belleville and doing ministry there. And so we've been on a bit of a hiatus of just uh, relaunched uh, things, uh, Isaac moving away, Doug uh, being on uh, paternal leave. And uh, so... Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, we, I host it and, uh, we have various uh, different people that we've had on the most recent episode. I, I interview, uh, Brian Sergio, who is a part of the, uh, is a singer songwriter of, uh, uh, church music and is involved with, uh, Brian McLaren and Cameron Trimble in the United States with this convergence music project. And so they've launched this new kind of progressive music project that uh, is doing some great things. So I had an opportunity to talk with him about, uh, about church music. What's the name of the podcast? It's Illuminate Faith. I will put it in the chat because it's Thank got you. the number eight in there. Uh, and 
So Thank you. you. Find that through iTunes and uh, uh, other locations as well. Is that an audio or a video? It's an audio podcast. Yeah, our whole, for me, it's, I, I'm one of those guys that just likes to, if I've got a, a car ride, uh, to be able to download a podcast and, and listen has been fantastic. And it makes things a little bit easier, I think, for, uh, for consuming uh, things. So, um, yeah. When you, when you started talking, I thought, is this person in the broadcast industry? Because you have a perfect broadcast. Yes. Voice. <laughs> that, uh, that, the, the, that education that I had earlier on in life and when I stepped into ministry, I thought that I had left the broadcasting uh, piece behind. But this has been a, a, a fantastic, you know, with technology advancing as it has, um, it's been great to, uh, to lean back on those, those skills that I have in that world. And Stacey, you're looking at doing something similar, it sounds like. Sorry, mute. Um, we just started a podcast. Our first one went out on March 24th. And we have a congregation member that um, was really keen and kind of came to us with an idea. And so we're trying it out. And it seems to be, uh, so far, the first one went really well. And it was really exciting. So we have kind of a list of a few more um, topics that we're going to go through. And we're going to see where it goes. But exciting to be starting something new. Podcasters Unite. Yes, Stacy. <laughs> we, we want to do one in Bash uh, with our minister. And, or, well, like, but anyway, we want to, to create one. And so I'm really anxious to see how it works. So. Okay. And that is the point. So thank you, Jackie. You asked the question earlier, too. That is the right thing to do here. You're allowed to ask each other questions and, uh, and any connections. Because as you've seen, like, you're all working in different areas using technology differently and what we can learn and share with each other. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, so anyone who hasn't, like, Greg, Peter, Peter, Willie, is this mind-blowing yet? <laughs> Has anybody done any interfaith activity using technology? Like with a mosque or a synagogue or a temple? Randy, I thought you did some with the funerals. And yeah, I don't think we've done anything interfaith, though. I can't think of. I mean, we certainly... Um, we can go mobile, so we can go to another event. Um, but uh, and we do funerals. We've even done weddings. But uh, well, actually, now that I think of it, we did do a funeral from a Catholic church. One of the a mass for a police officer who passed away. And I did a. I, 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 sorry, I streamed a, a wedding. A wedding. Uh, for a family in, for a Scotland, family in Scotland, Scotland that took place. Oh, that's very cool. Okay. Any other questions for each other? Not so much a question, Carla, but an observation. With the changes that are coming about in the, the United Church of Canada, I, I think the kinds of projects that we're seeing here are essential, are essential to make, to make the, the church nationally, nationally aware of. Aware of. Because I think because with I the think distance that they're dealing with, dealing with this, is, this is the new way of, new doing, way church. of doing church. I, and I agree, and George. I, agree, I think George, that, I think that uh, one of the, one because of the, we're in the same region, we're in this, in this huge, huge geographical, geographical area, area that's not that's really going to really be, be um, um, Viable, viable if we don't use we don't some, some element, element of technology, of technology to link us. us. Um, you know, um, from you one know, end of the region, region to the region next, to the it's going to be maybe 14, 14 hours straight driving. driving. So if you're so going, if to, you're a going meeting, to a meeting, you're talking, you're about, talking about at least a day and a half if you stop for food and sleep. One way for the meeting. And for us to fly, you fly to Toronto white in there and then you fly up to the other part of the northern part of the region uh, so I, I'm sort of interested in what kind of uh, technological uh, initiatives we can take to take what we sort of learn and apply it to our governance and our structures and how do we create now the presbyteries are gone 
uh, there's uh, going to be a real gap, gap for how we for get, how to, know we get to know people in the people larger, in the church, larger church. church. Right. So when you were a presbytery rep, you got to meet people in other congregations and it sort of got you outside of the congregational um, sort of com, uh, confines. And so my question is going to be with no presbyteries, how are people in the congregations going to start to get knowing people outside in other congregations and in the larger church? And it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Willie, I'm wondering if your computer speaker is on. I don't know. I don't know how to find it. I've been looking for it, but I can't find it. Just on the computer itself? It should be in the bottom part um, of the screen. Bottom left. I've got join audio and stop video. That's all it says at the bottom. There's a little arrow a little pointing arrow up beside pointing the, up the microphone. The microphone. If you click on that, it will show you something about the speakers. There's phone call, computer audio. No. And where is there a check? No, there's just a little green arrow that I clicked on where the audio is. Maybe click it again. So it has a red line through it. Nothing happens when I go on there. I just get that screen up that says already joined by phone. Please enter number 75 on your phone. Okay, so we've got the, the echo has been canceled, I think. No, nope, still there. Because I see the across through the microphone on everybody else's pictures, but I don't see it come up on mine. And it just says pin video, rename or hide myself. Are we good now? No. I don't know what I need to do. So besides streaming and podcast, is there any other technology that anybody's using? Uh, we, we use YouTube. Sorry, Willie, maybe just close your screen so we don't need to see your webcam. Just close it right off? Yeah, and then just stay on my phone if you want to. Okay. You can still hear us. Perfect. Oh. Okay, I can still hear you. Okay, Michelle, you are going to comment? Um, so, Peter and everyone, we use... Um, uh, YouTube. Uh, we use all the social media network channels. Um, we use WordPress for the website. Um, we do PowerPoint presentations, and those are the basics. I mean, that's where you the the starting point for most churches. Um, we're urban, so our audience is within five kilometers. Uh, we do audio sermons, and they appeal to um, those that are unwell or the cottagers and, or skiers. Uh, so they're, they're I'll listen to quite a bit, or for people who want to review them um, after a Sunday. So they are very popular. Um, and I guess that's what we're using. We're just basic. Oh, we, we would like to get into live streaming where we could live stream into retirement homes um, so that they could enjoy the Sunday service with us uh, but we need to think about staffing that night and Randy um, introduced me to that idea earlier a couple of months ago uh, which I think would work very well for lots of the senior seniors facilities that are in in this area yeah, we're, yeah, we we're, uh, stream we stream automatically to Facebook as well. So we we have our um, a service that we stream to. They give us a feed for our website, uh, and, but it also sends it to uh, Facebook. We're actually finding getting we're getting some really good numbers on Facebook uh, that sort of, sort of surprised me. Uh, the other thing that that we're uh, technology we're using. Anyone familiar with the Roku boxes? Yeah, so yeah, we so also we stream, also we have a channel, a channel 
on uh, Roku, on, uh, Roku. Uh, and so uh, someone so on their TV, on their TV with a Roku, with a box, Roku or a Roku box or a Roku stick can, can subscribe, subscribe to our channel, to our channel and they can, and they can uh, on their televisions, uh, 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 get our get live our service on Sunday, Sunday morning and any of our any archives of our as well. Archives as well. And that's sort of pretty that's cool to be able to, to just able sort of go on your, on your TV and, and access, access things and not even have a computer. Have a computer. So it's Peter so from Yellow Knife here. here. I, um, I, um, I'm the one who has to leave pretty soon, but I thought I would tell you about the fact that we're, I'm the pastoral oversight, oversight convener for, for Northern Lights Northern Presbytery Lake, and Alberta and Northwest Alberta Conference. And Northwest Conference. And, uh, and which is uh, about to uh, end, uh, its, end its, its existence, like all the other presbyteries. So one of the so things we decided to do was to uh, do uh, virtual do visits with every pastoral charge in our presbytery. We go all the way, from, all the way from Whitehorse in the west and the north, to Yellowknife in the east and the north, um, to uh, Grand Prairie and uh, and so on. And what we're going to do is we we actually I got introduced to this uh, to this platform Zoom uh, through being you know, on Edge webinars in the fall, and uh, we're subscribing to this and we're using it to do uh, pastoral oversight visits with every pastoral charge uh, during the month of April and May and hopefully into June and so on, um, just to uh, give opportunity for congregations to uh, tell the story about their a, a story about their pastoral charge or congregation or church. Um, so that they can then use that to introduce themselves to the region that they're going to be part of when uh, those regions come into existence at the beginning of January next year. Um, one of the things that we're doing here is providing worship resources for churches that don't have uh, any, uh, any ministers or don't have licensed lay worship leaders. Uh, so what we do is we have a Dropbox, and in that Dropbox is a cluster worship folder Within the cluster worship folder, there are a whole series of subfolders. And so what we do is when we put a service together, we put a copy of all of the items for that service into the cluster worship Dropbox, show it according to its calendar placement in the lectionary year. <clears throat> so people can go in and they can use any part of what we put in there. So for the last Sunday, uh, there was a PowerPoint for worship. Um, there was a generic bulletin, there was a typed version of the sermon, there was a video of that same sermon. So they can use, and, and there were some other video resources in there that we produced as well for uh, Easter worship, including a copyrighted photograph of uh, Emma Gonzalez uh, that was used with permission that was put into the Dropbox as well. So any church that wanted access to that, uh, or would be able to use any or all of those resources for their worship service. And so we've been doing that since last August. Okay, we've been doing those types of similar things too, having a Dropbox where people can access information. And one of our challenges is trying to get people up to speed with tech. So we've had to have um, like social media 101 workshops, and we're going to try and work on doing more tech cafes so that we can get people um, more versed on on how to access these files because they want they want the information they just don't know how to get them. Yep. So we do the same thing. Uh, if if a church calls and asks for access to the cluster worship Dropbox, either myself or my wife or both of us will go and we will do a series of workshops in that mm -hmm. community to bring them up to speed. And in many instances, they actually need to buy some technology. They need to buy a computer. True. That's so yeah. true. And the issue for us in, in the Northwest right now is similar to other rural uh, communities, reliable internet. Like if I, can, if I can make streaming, live streaming work in Manitowage, I can make it work anywhere. I'm convinced of that. So they're our first target uh, to connect to St. John's in Marathon. And this month we're going to do a, our first joint worship service because their internet is absolutely abysmal. And we're going to go with cellular, um, a cellular signal uh, that Randy introduced me to um, that gives us enough bandwidth that we can actually do that worship service um, using in Manitowoc a cellular network. Is that like a hotspot? Uh, similar. Yeah. Cellular? Yeah. Yep. 
George, that's what we had to do between our two churches as well, because Bashaw's uh, area, we didn't have enough download or, or we did, we had enough download, not enough upload speed. And so we ended up using cell technology as well. Yeah, we're, we're finding that the critical issue here is upload speed. Uh, I mean, where I am right now, I'm on broadband 150. So I don't worry about it at all. And at the church, we're on broadband 80. We've yeah. got lots of bandwidth for doing that kind of thing. But there are some of our communities, horn pain is going to be terrible as well. Yeah, um, but in rural Canada, it's going to be terrible anywhere, mostly. Yeah. And it is going to need cell technology for now. And it works really well. We have no problem with our streaming with yeah. the cell technology. Great. Yeah. Well, why did I start yeah. the discussion? My question was, what are the challenges? And you're already doing this. So. <laughs> We're not um, just uh, thinking about uh, those that aren't um, live streaming. We're about to do that. We actually, uh, our first kind of uh, a moment of kind of dipping our toe in that area had to do with a funeral service and uh, a, a person that couldn't get to that uh, service because they're at, at end of life. Um, so we, we've stepped into that area there, but uh, we've also been doing some things related to, and I'm sure there are others doing this, but uh, members of our congregation who can't make it out to worship or those that have moved away. We've on a few occasions had uh, them reading scripture uh, in the worship service um, via video, uh, which has been great. And actually at that same funeral service where we um, uh, streamed uh, for a few people to, uh, to consume that, to catch that um, remotely, uh, we also had uh, the granddaughter of the, uh, the deceased uh, reading. She was in Myanmar and uh, couldn't make it for the service, but we, uh, she was able to send recordings of her reading scripture, and so she was able to participate in the worship service, and uh, so it was great uh, to be able to, uh, you know, on a few occasions use that um, to engage people and to, to have people involved uh, in the leadership of worship. That's great. Carla, Joy and I are also involved in the online licensed lay worship leader training program. And um, so we're able to connect with people right across Canada. In Joy's uh, mentoring group right now, she has a, a, a person from uh, one of the urban churches in Vancouver participating in her, in her uh, mentored group. And she also has someone on the East Coast of Canada uh, there. I have four, uh, four people from Southern Saskatchewan and Southern Manitoba in my particular group. Um, you know what? It, it's it's changed. Uh, it's changed how I understand experiencing my own faith. Uh, when you uh, do lectio divina on a tractor, um, or when uh, we have a conversation around faith, and in the background I can hear and see cattle being birthed. Um, I mean, three of the, three of the people who are in my group are are from farm families, working farm families. And so they're still working while we're participating. And so it, uh, it, it's been an amazing journey for the last two years in this program to experience some of those ways in which we grow our faith as part of our everyday lives. And we're, we're experiencing that through the use of this kind of technology. That is great. Um, so leading into the next question is, what other opportunities are you seeing from this? And thank you, George, for sh sharing that. Like, what's the future of this? Or what are other things you're hoping to explore? I know Dave already said he's looking at live streaming as the next step, but what else are you seeing? Oh, I, I, I honestly think we're limited by our imaginations. Uh, I wouldn't have said that a while ago, I had, I had this kind of a dream that we're living out right this minute. Uh, many, many years ago, 1972, it's when I first broached this topic to the Ministry of Education in Ontario as a, a way of having a virtual classroom. The technology was nowhere near ready for that concept, mm -hmm. except as we viewed it on Star Trek in those days. Um, I, I have some training from the, the uh, uh, Canada Research Council in Satellite Technology as part of remote education process. And so, of course, 
1972, when I was doing that training, uh, I had all kinds of visions of what the potential of this was for in terms of education. Well, it's taken until now to get to the point where we can dream the dream and live it out. It's an amazing journey. And so I'm, I'm just letting my mind wander now and everything is possible. Yeah, I agree with George. I mean, it's, it's the imagination uh, is all the only thing that can limit us. We can do anything we really want on, on this. In, in Thunder Bay, we're connected to um, not only the Ontario Telemedicine Network, where, uh, we're, so we can reach out to hospitals, do training, hospice training, that kind of stuff there. But we're, we're also close to uh, a network called KNET. And KNET is uh, video conferencing technologies to the northern reserves in northwestern Ontario. Uh, and so we're just an IP address away from connecting to all sorts of Aboriginal communities. And so, you know, we sort of see even an option uh, for some, some Aboriginal ministry, uh, Indigenous ministry, uh, that we're pretty well already set up for technologically. So that's, that's sort of an exciting possibility as well. Yep. I would agree with uh, you know, Randy and George. I think that um, imagination is is something that's desperately needed uh, as it relates to this. I've been thinking a lot about uh, what does it mean to be a, a minister of the word and sacrament uh, in 2018. Uh, and uh, I really, you know, I was thinking about that actually because, you know, Easter Sunday we opened up, we've been doing through the season of Lent at, uh, at Riverside here, um, rather than kind of those spoken word uh, call and response uh, uh, call to worships, you know, we've been using video videos to enter into uh, to worship and I help to kind of create one for uh, for Easter Sunday morning and and for me it's you know it's that that ability to imagine what it might mean to uh, to um, be a minister uh, what does the word mean today how might we engage people in, in new kinds of way and not just with you know printed words spoken word that type of thing uh, and so I do think that uh, as it relates to um, you know the, the church we have to be thinking about um, how we move forward here and how we engage people in different ways because uh, it very much we're being left behind and it's because we're sticking to those old ways of thinking about uh, what does it mean to, to be a minister? What does it mean to engage people uh, in the worship of, of God? So um, yeah, uh, absolutely uh, agree with the uh, thoughts on that. Yeah, I would too. I would too. They, I, we, is the, I think that I think we don't even know what's coming <laughs> yet, and and we just want to be prepared by using what already is, and it and it's it's amazing what you can achieve. I suggest to people who are detractors of using technology as a tool within worship that this is not new. In the ancient church, they built stained glass windows as the audio visual device. So this is the new stained glass window. Yeah. You know, people couldn't read, so they used the imagery and the stained glass as their learning tools. And I mean, what more is this than, than that kind of a device, except that it's moving now in real time, and we've got the audio to go with it. We don't have to memorize the songs that tell the story, that develop the faith. Um, I don't need other people to come around and do that face to face. Now I've got this moving stained glass window in front of me. I think um, I want to bring up a challenge. I think one of the challenges that we're having is because technology does change, like things like MySpace, they don't even exist anymore. Um, so the trends of, of like all the kids are on Snapchat, but that's not anything that we've brought into um, our uh, uh, on, into our communications plan um, just because nobody uses it. So we have some people that only only uh, uh, take phone calls. We have some people that only still do snail mail. We have some that will do only email and never do social media. So it's all trying to figure out, like we, we just did a series of videos and this is, it's, it's very time consuming and, and taking our resources and putting it where, where do we put it? So trying to get that message out to all the different audiences and how they choose to receive the communication is a big challenge. For me, I want to see video. That's all I want to see. But it's, it's, it's expensive to make video. Any thoughts about that challenge? 
jump in. Can you hear me or not? Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if it was working before. Um, yep. I, I wanted to back up what Michelle was saying there. And somebody earlier had made a comment about um, teenagers in their bedrooms on their phones. I happen to have one of said teenagers in her bedroom <laughs> on her phone. Me too. Um, and I think, what, I think what we can do is we can take that challenge and say, so we know where they are and we know how they're connecting with the world. Is it our job to tell them to show up in church on Sunday morning or is it our job for the church to, ne to connect with them where they are, when they are? Um, do, we, do we need to start to rethink? Great uh, question. Sunday wow. morning is necessary for the people who honestly are paying our bills. We know how that works, but um, are there ways that we can use the technology to connect with the, with a new generation who, I mean, like you said, they, they're either looking for video or they're looking for it in Snapchat or they want it in 140 characters or less. They may or may not be willing to sit through a 12 minute sermon, let alone a 43 minute sermon. Um, but those same people will sit through a, a hour and a half feature length or like three hour feature length movie, no problem. And so, yeah. you know, we, we need to take a look at what they're doing and where they're doing it and, and use those tools. And part of the difficulty is that as I look around here, none of us, I don't think are in our teens. Um, and <laughs> the people who are making the decisions, <laughs> the people making decisions within churches don't get it. I mean, I don't get it. I've got a kid who is starting to get it. And so I'm trying to totally steal from her to understand a little bit better. Um, I lived 15 years of my life within technology. And so I'm a lot closer than it, closer to it than lots of people. But even still, I realize there's so many parts of this that are totally over my head or I'm missing altogether the way that the tools are used, like Snapchat. I physically know how it works, but I don't get the culture within which it works. And so yeah. we need to hopefully use some of those things. That's where I see the future to connect with people who um, a stained glass window isn't going to work for them. And so it's now time for us to find a new style of stained glass window. Yeah, I think uh, I would agree, right. uh, Greg. I think that uh, we our default position often is to uh, is to go to the demographic that is uh, you know uh, m you know represented uh, the most within our congregations and things, and uh, and that's the easy way. So how do we how do we deepen uh, you know our our Christian worship in such a way that uh, that we can engage uh, those those younger folk and 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 actually to rethink as well the uh, you know the reality is that uh, the younger generation has the ability to to multitask I remember doing I did youth ministry for like close to 20 years in the United Church of Canada and in the Presbyterian Church USA and I remember when I was down working in the Presbyterian Church I had a, a young uh, a teenage uh, girl that would be in uh, Sunday school class and it just seemed like she was not engaged whatsoever not listening at all um, kind of caught you know uh, distracted by things and various things like that and and you know I remember months after sort of concluding that that was uh, she was just unplugged uh, during that time that uh, her mother had spoke to me and was you know, like we had this conversation where I realized that she was getting every single last bit uh, that was being offered uh, you know during our Sunday morning uh, time uh, together um, and I you know I think about multitasking and you know people tweeting during worship and that type of thing mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't see that and I think there's a generational divide there where there's a thought of like okay somebody might be on their phone reading the scripture and maybe the notes to go along with that but there's an assumption of oh gosh they're texting in church uh, and and exactly they are texting in church well they're in church <laughs> isn't that great uh but I, I do think and i it's a challenge for me too how to how do i um not just go to the default of you know well this is the generation that's mostly represented so we'll speak to them and not to uh to those younger generations so i i don't know if i have all the answers there but uh but i'm i'm mindful of the need to uh to press on and, and go deeper has anyone used uh, anything like Kahoot or the uh, online polling kind of technologies sort of to get live feedback in a service? My son has. Yeah. Yeah, because there's some interesting applications there, eh? I mean, you're, someone has their phone. You encourage them to bring their phone to church. You put up a question on the screen. And uh, you see them answering live, and you can get a sort of a sense of where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, or even what direction they want things to go. Um, yep. I heard of one place in the States during an election, they were saying, you know, they were putting up questions like, would Jesus raise taxes? Yes or no? 
and getting people to respond to that. And it just sort of strikes me that there's a, that's a technology that uh, holds some promise to creating a really higher level of engagement during a sermon or uh, a worship experience. Have you tried the sermon scorecard? Has that uh... <laughs> never heard of it? No, no. I, I'm saying just did that asked this weekend. Feedback? How's the sermon? Are you liking it? One out of ten. <laughs> oh my gosh! Somebody okay. asked me to actually put a rating system on the web website this this last weekend per sermon. Oh, well. I love it. You know well, the rating. The rating idea is an interesting one because people make decisions about what restaurant they go to based on reading 400 Yelp True. or they so true. We and we as churches don't bother. I mean, we we've got people, we've got captive audience within our congregations who love being there, who have good reasons for being there, who if you ask them would tell you why, and you might be able to boil that down to something so that a a, a person from a younger generation who does rely on on reviews before they buy something on Amazon or before they go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's something that, um, that I'm, I'm changing churches fairly soon. And I'm kind of hoping to bring that to the new church because I've, I've been creeping them on Facebook and, you know, <laughs> getting to know what their current existence is, but uh, that's something I want to bring to them because their experience their what I've experienced of them is something that I can tell is made entirely by people aged 50 and above and aimed yes. at those people. Um, and so I, I'm kind of I'm interested to bring that idea to them to say, so what if we had a bunch of reviews? Um, no different than, I mean, Amazon, it's mostly paid reviews and we know that and that's fine. So let's go to the people who we already have within our congregation, get them to do reviews, put that on websites and on Facebook pages and, and that sort of thing, or tweet that out, make that part of it. Um, as long as they're not reviewing my sermons, as long as they're reviewing the church itself. Uh, another thing, Greg, too, that you should have available to you is statistics. And I spend a lot of time doing statistic analysis uh, of all the social media platforms and the website. And that really helps a lot. That really gives a clear, a clear indicator of what people are interested in, what they're not interested in. To know how people are getting there, why they're getting there, where they came from. Exactly. Absolutely. I'd like to bring a few, uh, few areas together with a comment and uh, number one it starts with uh, somebody who talked about history and a couple hundred years ago spiritual institutions were known as community hubs and uh, why don't we bring that into the, uh, uh, the current right now where they can perform that same kind of role and I think another element that goes into this is the element of connecting religions together. So how many of you have been in a mosque or a synagogue or a temple and learn from what they're doing mm -hmm. and then inviting them to come into your church to find out what you're doing? And another element that I'd like to throw in there is the idea of feel-good stories. And these can be feel-good stories let me give you a couple of quick examples. A seven-year-old looked in his closet, came back to his mother and said, I got a lot of clothes here that I don't need. I'd like to give them to the hospital or to a Ronald McDonald house. An 11-year-old on her way to school passed a homeless woman on the street. She came home and she said to her mother, I'd like to develop a homeless kit for people who are homeless. GoFundMe gave those kids $1,000 to explore that idea even further. And Carla, I don't know whether you'd want to talk about the one, uh, the $20 one. Oh, I think they felt, yeah, where a church has given out 20, because this is actually back in the 70s, um, where churches were giving out to the congregational members $20 and to see how they could use their gift to turn that into something. So yeah, many have done that. But I, I think the point is like, how do we use technology to better tell our story? And, and the, feel, the yeah. feel good stories of say two minutes or less could mm -hmm. uh, go on Apple. They could go on multiple sources where either young kids or tweens or teens or 20-somethings could listen to those feel-good stories and say, hey, I could do something similar. I could do something better than that. 
So there's a, there's a real technology opportunity. Yeah. We just uh, started some workshops for uh, video for seniors. And uh, what, uh, what our, our uh, approach was is that um, when people get marginalized, what's really important is that they get a voice. And there are different tools that allow you to have your voice. And, and one of the most powerful tools now is video. Uh, and so we wanted to say, how can we start um, uh, creating some video literacy for our seniors so that they can start telling their stories with video and, and be empowered about it because it seems so intimidating. It seems so far beyond. So we had a series of workshops where we talked about, you know, how video is telling your story. What story do you have to tell? Uh, we had videos on or a workshop on uh, cameras and uh, interviews and that kind of thing. Uh, I even had one on sort of the basics of software to edit your video together. Uh, and what was really interesting, we had a small group doing it, but they started to clue in to the different kinds of stories they had to tell. And they started getting excited about it. And then we started sort of pulling around and different people had different resources. So one person said, well, you know, my son does a lot of music and he'd be able to help with the music scores on some of this. Yeah. You know, other people said, you know, I'm into genealogy or I have all sorts of pictures or all that kind of stuff. And we started realizing that there was this whole complementary uh, area of resources that people had to offer. And now we're the next step, of course, is to say, what was your idea and how, is we, uh, how can we as a community with the technology that we have uh, mm -hmm. assist you in telling your story? I think, um, but Jackie left already, but um, on their online ministry, she had done a whole campaign with her group, uh, uh, hashtag, uh, what, what do I stand for? And they did videos and they, and they did it all on social media and it was very, very successful. And just giving anybody that voice with a simple question like that, it, it's huge literacy. And um, it's awesome to, to connect people like that. Really great. Mm -hmm. when I'm, I know that we've, we're over two o'clock at this point, Eastern Standard Time, so just recognizing that. And really, the, the point of these conversations is for you to connect. And I'm really excited. Actually, I would say in the first like 10 minutes, I was like, wow, like everyone on this, this conversation just was so much energy and so motivated. And I'd have to say, for myself anyway, when we hear about you guys are saying that you're being limited by your own imagination, well, I'm not really seeing that happening. <laughs> I'd say the, the very reverse is happening, is that like I'm being motivated and inspired by the work that's being done. But the big thing is that you guys connect with each other afterwards as well, and we continue to support you with some of the challenges that you are facing, or, or not just us, how are you supporting each other? Um, so I know that I saw a bunch of people who wanted to share their email. Jackie shared her email, George, Peter from Yellowknife, Peter Miller did, Stacy did. Um, if anybody else wants to, please throw your name into the chat. So it will go out with the email. Uh, thank you for coming to this with the recording as well. Um, so that you guys can continue to connect with each other. We'll continue to have online conversations. Um, and I think in future, what you're going to start seeing is they'll become more niche. We'll do one just about maybe podcasts or marketing communications. We'll do one just about video live streaming. I think uh, as we start to segment this so that people who want to learn more about it can get more information and be connected in that way. Perfect. Any other questions for each other or like final thoughts that they have from this conversation? Well, I just had one thing for you, Carla. Uh, I was sort of wondering if maybe this, uh, the discussion around podcasts inspired you uh, to maybe start a, a podcast on the changing church and what we might expect as things come along and, and maybe have discussions with different people at uh, the national church about some of the initiatives that are going on because we're going into a phase of rapid change where yep. communication is going to be really key. And I think uh, hearing on a weekly basis, even what's going on would be of great value. Um, I would love to, but also recognizing that I don't think it always has to be national. <laughs> Just to be very clear. <laughs> um, and so always looking for partnerships. And um, I know we're still recording and I'm being cognizant of that. But um, one thing that we have talked uh, on the technology is that we've actually under Embrace the Spirit given out a lot of technology grant applications last year. And what we're looking at in future is the people who are leaders in technology 
should it be, you know, a joint grants committee that makes decisions, or do we just allocate that this is the budget for technology in 2019, and people like you who are experts in doing great things in technology, let's unleash your imagination by saying, here is a budget to keep on pushing that boundary. And you decide how it's used, as opposed to a joint grants committee that isn't necessarily as tech savvy as you are. Hmm. Not about national all the time, right? <laughs> Not about Toronto. <laughs> well, but I think national can get the message out to a much broader audience than some of us can. We're, we're, we tend to be focused a little more locally. Um, uh, certainly for me, local is about a 370 five kilometer uh, circle but uh, we, we're actually expanding beyond that and um, and going to go a lot wider than the 375 you know, this this coming month um, but I was at a meeting in Sudbury a boundaries uh, dialogue in Sudbury last March a year ago this past March and one of the anxieties that was exhibited there was people saying, oh my God, how are we going to be able to deal with this huge area that we're looking at? And we suggested right off the bat is, well, let's start using technology. And they kind of looked at me and at my wife as if we were from outer space, for heaven's sake. Uh, so there is a large segment of our population, our church population, that still don't know that this technology is there that it can it can bring us together it has that potential oh, yeah so a few things on this just so resources because number one april 15th is the next application deadline for new ministries seeds of hope and embracing the spirit so if you guys have ideas for technology and pushing the boundaries that's available Number two, like Randy, totally on point. There has been conversations about either a radio show or a podcast. Um, and so I think it's just, should it be us or should it be someone who's already doing this work and that we're just continuing to promote at that, that place so that it's not always Toronto? Um, next thing is Buying United. Yeah, exactly. So Buying United, um, it's, Basically, buyunited.ca is where we have all our central procurements and shared services agreements. Um, there's a big push to make more um, technology available. So we're actually driving to get every United Church across Canada uh, with their TechSoup ID so that they get free Microsoft 365 and access to QuickBooks. And like that's all available there. Um, we also have national contracts with both Insight Hardware as well as Dell. So we can offer significant discounts on hardware now to uh, all the congregations as well and communities of faith. So that is coming. We're actually rebranding Un Brian United under the United Church of Canada website, and we will have biannual releases of all the technology um, resources that are available, fully recognizing that sometimes it's not just the deals. Sometimes it's just information, specifically websites. I mean, how many places can you get free websites, but do you choose between WordPress, do you choose between Wix? Things like mail um, and newsletters, do you choose between Constant Contact or MailChimp, right? And what are the best practices there? So in the rebranding of Buying United, a, a big focus is on resources for congregations, as well as creating forums and chat areas so the experts like you can get more involved in what you know and share that with the wider church and really be reunited. <laughs> that was a lot so there are we are doing and thinking about things <laughs> that's perfect <clears throat> not just conversations action too sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing now um, <laughs> if there's any questions about any of this please let me know and I can always connect you with the right people or answer any of your questions um, and like, I love these conversations because I get to meet people that I haven't met already and then continue to hear the stories of what's happening. But it's not about me, it is about you guys connecting with each other. Perfect. Um, anyone that want to close us in prayer? I always love to offer that out there. I want to volunteer someone. <laughs> Dave, I'm totally looking at you. Greg should do it. <laughs> Oh, Dave's going to do it. <laughs> well, I heard my name there, so <laughs> why don't I uh, be voluntold?
Let's pray. <laughs> God, we give you great thanks uh, for the ability to uh, help us imagine, imagine new ways of thinking, new ways of uh, connecting people with your spirit. Um, I give you thanks for the work of Edge and uh, for all of these people that have been a part of this uh, webinar and the continuing work that they are doing uh, to push the church forward. Uh, guide us as, uh, as you continue to reshape uh, our communities of faith. Uh, help us to not lose sight of um, the purpose for which we uh, gather the purpose for which we uh, we worship and organize ourselves. Bless us uh, deep in our walk with uh, with you and guide us in uh, the days and the weeks ahead. Uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Like I said, I am very inspired from this conversation. Blessings on your day. Thanks, Carla. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you all. Bye.